the nervous system. Yeah, there's two divisions, but really the central and the peripheral work together. Let's take a look, a little preview, because inside the nervous system are neuroglia, cells, and neurons. See those tree-like structures? Ah, it's amazing. I see this. Well, those tree-like structures are the dendrites. Because cells have a living cell body, organelles, nucleus, to keep them alive. And then they're going to receive the signals and pass them on down the axon. So think of it like a copper wire on a blender, right? Because the, the copper wire has myelin or a covering over it. Okay, types of neurons. Sensory. We sense something. So a sensory neuron says, hey, something just hit me. Inner neuron. That's where we kind of think. Although a reflex arc it just bounces off the uh, spinal cord. But inner neurons process it. Motor tells us what to do. So there you have it. Sensory inner motor. Right, it's a reflex arc. Now, the myelin I briefly talked about because the axon is covered in myelin, at least in the white matter of our nervous system. But let's say there's a car accident. Our macrophages, there's the word, they're going to do their job. They're going to break this down because it's no longer functional. But that causes paralysis in the central nervous system. But in the PNS, the peripheral, sometimes the macrophages can help repair it. And so have you ever had this happen? You maybe injure a finger and maybe it's numb for a while and then you start to sense feeling again. And so that's why research is, is, is being done to try to figure out how can we get myelin to regrow on a damaged neuron. It's a new frontier. Some progress is being made. Okay, neurotransmitters are just substances. Okay, here's a close-up. So between the dendrite and the axon is a synapse. We're going to change the electrical impulse to chemicals. Now it could be excitatory, such as epinephrine, adrenaline, same thing. It's going to help us with anaphylaxis. Let's say you have a patient who's in shock or has an asthma attack or cardiac arrest. Okay, what do we need to worry about? Airway. Let's open up the airway and let's get the heart beating. Sustain life. Norepinephrine, very similar, but we might do this in septicemia or septic shock, but it has a similar effect on breathing, uh, in depression as well. Now, as long as we're talking about this neurotransmitter idea, I'd like to get a little video going here. So we can see that the area between an exon and a neuron, you can see the chemicals that are passing across. Now, if it's serotonin, that affects mood, anxiety. Here we have it. Take a look. We have the presynaptic, the chemicals are going to form. And this happens fast, all right? I mean, this video is super slow. In our bodies, it's microseconds. Okay, here's the electrical impulse. Converted into neurotransmitter chemicals. All right now, SSRIs, selective serotonin uptake. So what that means is maybe we want to regulate the serotonin, yeah, so that we don't get these dips like anxiety and depression. And and that's a wise way to live. Okay, some people want to search for like extreme happiness. But the problem is there's only a certain amount of neurotransmitters. And if you get too happy and you use these up, then you're gonna you're gonna go down. <laughs> so and that's why there's some problem with uh, drug abuse, you know. They uh you can't stay happy forever. Contentment is a good thing to survive uh to, to uh, strive for. Okay, let's get back to this though. Dopamine. Okay, dopamine is yeah, involved in pleasure. Some addictive drugs cause that um dopamine release. Uh, Parkinson's, I'm talking about dopamine. Here we have some Parkinson's patients. Problem is the um, dopamine uh, neurotransmitters are in low supply. And you can't just give them pills. Uh, it doesn't work that way. And so you, you got to keep them moving. Uh, 
movement is, is key to that one, as well as, of course, medication. Senses, okay, taste, gustatory, same thing. Taste buds, papillae, same thing. You know. Smell, olfactory is the technical word. And you might wonder, okay, we have these olfactory nerves, but how do the nerves go into the brain? Cribiform plate. Crib means many holes. And so uh, if we smell something, it gets converted from an odor molecule to an electrical impulse. Basically, the brain and the smell are one. Now, some people destroy this, unfortunately. COVID may cause a temporary loss, but usually that's um, it comes back. Okay, vision. The eye is very practical, even though all these words make it look confusing. Because we need to have a protective outer cornea. We need to have an aqueous humor so the eye doesn't collapse. Lens to focus the image. We need a retina back here so that we can, it's like a movie projector, right? So our brain can say, hey, what are we looking at? And then the choroid is to keep light from bouncing around inside the eyeball. All right, have you ever had that? You've been dazzled and you can't see? Well, the choroid is supposed to absorb that light, and the front becomes the iris. Like if you have brown eyes or blue eyes, that's the iris. And the pupil is going to open up when it's dark outside, or if a loved one walks into the room, the pupil tends to open up too. If it's bright, it's going to shut down. Yeah. What if you're nearsighted? That doesn't have anything to do with how far you can see. It means that your lens thinks the eyeball is longer than it, uh, it is. And so it, it uh, pitches just a little bit short of the retina. Right? And that's why we use a concave lens. Now, farsightedness. This is if a person has a short eyeball, it focuses it too far. And then we have a convex lens. Astigmatism is just irregular. The cornea is irregular, so we use an irregular lens. Okay, hearing. Auditory. We have the outer ear with the oracle or areha, and it's supported with cartilage. I think we know that. The auditory ear canal, look, here I am. There's ceruminous glands right in here for wax. Now, earwax is not a bad thing. It's antimicrobial. So you don't need to go digging it out. If you get an impaction, sometimes it's, if you have patients that don't chew their food, they're eating puddings and applesauce, and they get serious impact. Sometimes you can just get them chewing, and it'll slough off some wax. Tympanum's eardrum, ossicles. Malleus Inca Stapes. My inner sound. That's one way my students remember this. My inner sound. Malleus Inca Stapes. Okay, they're going to transmit uh, the vibrations to the inner ear. Okay, auditory, station two. This relieves pressure, but sometimes you'll have children that this eustachian tube is almost horizontal because their jaw is still. You know, not very big, but as their face grows, the tube drops, and then one day the ear infections are gone. Thank goodness for that if you're a parent. Okay, as I mentioned, ossicles. Hey, let's take a look at this because it's kind of cool how the ossicles are going to transmit sound. Okay, let's bump it on ahead to yeah, right about here. We can see the ossicles. The journey of sound. Okay, malleus, incus, stapes. So they're going to, that's the tympanum, by the way, they're attached to on the left side. And there's the cochlea. And that's where our hair cells are. And, and that's the story I'm, I'm about to talk about because when we get exposed to over 100 decibels of sound, these little hairs in the video, they're going to become twisted. And we cannot fix that, okay? Hearing loss is permanent. I mean, there are, there are cochlear implants, and there's ways to deal with it. But those fragile strocilia, we need to protect them. All right, so next concert, earplugs, okay? Equilibrium, okay, it kind of relates to the middle ear. We have these 
uh, semicircular canals, but if these little crystals from the utricle and saculae, if they for some reason end up in the then we get vertigo. It's benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, BPPV. Uh, paroxysmal meaning uh, sudden. Or you can get sinusitis. Like if you ever had a cold and your sinuses are so stuffed up and you feel dizzy, all right, that's affecting the pressure here. Sometimes a nasal decongestant can take care of that. Some infections. Meningitis, think of meninges. That's the tissue that protects our spinal cord and our brain. If we look at how to do a lumbar puncture, we can see that we usually put the patient in a recumbent. Uh, here's a sitting or recumbent there. The, the, but the, what you want to do is get uh, lumbar three and four spaced out so you can insert the needle. All right, you clean the area. And then here you can see, all we're going to do is extract some cerebrospinal spinal fluid. Now, we can diagnose meningitis sometimes with just a clinical exam. But to know for sure, we need to go in there. Okay. Leprosy. At one time, leprosy was feared, but it's not very contagious. Uh, this, this is in India. I spent time in India. And there are leprosy... Uh, um, uh, it's really sad because it's treatable. Uh, what happens is sensory neurons. You hear this story? If we can't feel something, like if you have a stone in your shoe, you take it out. But someone with leprosy can't even feel that stone. And so the stone rubs a hole and they get an infection. And, and so we need the sensory neurons. Yeah, armadillos. Uh, some armadillo hunters come down with leprosy. All right. On to polio. Now, poliomyelitis is a um, caused by a virus, but it's you know, fecal contamination. So, we we see it in different areas. There there is a good vaccine, the IPV inactivated polio, uh, but we still see it in some parts of the world. We get a uh, atrophy or underdevelopment of muscle muscle tissue because motor neurons. So, if you remember. We have those three neurons, sensory, inner, motor. And motor is the one that gives us action. And so if the motor neurons are not stimulating muscle tissue, they are going to atrophy. And finally, rabies. Rabies is where we have an uh, infection of the, the central nervous system. And this is a serious disease. I've had my rabies shots, three of them. And, the, and that's a serious uh, vaccine. Uh, we tend to see it in dogs in developing countries. And we lose, you know, thousands of people die of rabies each year. You don't hear about it much. But, you know, we're good at vaccinating, but in some developing countries, it's a chore to keep track of all those dogs. Now, we don't get rabies from dogs very often in the U.S., but we get, you know, bats, raccoons, foxes. But usually uh, they're acting really strange. This thing about constriction of the uh, foaming at the mouth, you know, they look like there's saliva coming out their mouth, but you depend on that. All right, there you have it, nervous system. Thanks for listening.